Don't lose your way. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So, as you may or may not know, I made a video a couple days back when the Battlefield 5 beta first kind of launched and I was talking about my impressions and what I thought about the game and if you guys should have bought it when it first came out, like, you know, getting the two days early access by paying into the origin access bullshit. And honestly, I've played a lot more of the beta since then with friends and without friends, in a squad, without a squad, and I've really had a huge huge change in my opinions since then. This is largely attributed to one just playing a lot more of the beta and kind of getting over the new features and starting to see all the little things eat away at the game that just really started ruining the experience for me. And then I also watched a lot of other YouTubers videos and saw a lot of people, you know, hammering this game into the ground. And then I watched Angry Joe's live stream of Battlefield 5 in which he, uh, you know, saw a lot of issues with how the game is handling upgrade systems and everything and I've really had a huge change of opinion about this game. So I felt it would be a right thing to do to make a follow-up video because I really don't want to leave people with the impression that that video gives off. I feel like I was overly positive as I was really just experiencing all of the new features for the first time. And those new features, while they're very promising, also really don't fit very well into the mold of what Battlefield 5 currently is. And I'll try to explain that a little bit better. For example, stuff like the whole going down and being able to be revived by your squad members in principle is a really cool concept, but with the way Battlefield 5 plays and its emphasis on fast-paced, you know, action, having a system like that really doesn't make any sense. If we were back on the large-scale Battlefield 1942-sized maps, that system would be very welcome, but unfortunately we're stuck with modern-day dice who put more detail into the levels, which is nice, but they don't focus on the large-scale combat, which is what Battlefield has always been known for. In a lot of ways, DICE has really lost their way. Heck, even the vehicle selection here is really skimping. And again, the vehicle detail in this game is very astounding, it's very good, all the tanks look fantastic. But we only have three different types of tanks, or I guess technically four with the special tanks you can call in, per team. And that's only eight tanks. Same thing with the airplanes. You get three per side, that's only six. Now if they add like three more in the full game with the American stuff, maybe that will add a little bit more variety. But remember that Battlefield is a large scale conflict game, you know, land, sea, and air. And if you've played anything like War Thunder, you can see like there's just such a huge focus on vehicle combat in World War II. So many innovations were being made to all like weapons and machines of war. And to only see that limited selection available in the game is really disappointing for a modern AAA video game. And the size of the maps really doesn't help anything either because you have these small selections of available vehicles and sure you could make an argument like well Battlefield 1942 didn't have that many vehicles either you know in terms of like unique varieties but you also have to remember the age of that game. But again, about the maps, the thing is, is 1942 had these massive environments, massive engagements. You had air bases where planes would launch from, from both sides of the map for different teams, things like that. You could also launch off of like aircraft carriers. And then fast forward to Battlefield 5, which takes place in the exact same war, in the exact same settings, and we don't have anything like that. You could actually, I believe, pilot the aircraft carriers in 1942. Why the fuck can't we do that in Battlefield 5? It's just little things like that that I feel like really take away from the experience here. Hell, even go back and watch some Battlefield 1943 gameplay. That game was a Xbox Live only title. Actually, I think it might have been on the PlayStation 3 as well. But it was a downloadable game that only featured multiplayer, no kind of campaign or anything, and a couple of maps. But that game really nailed the whole World War II feeling much better, and I would prefer that being almost like remade to what we're currently getting. The gameplay of 1943 honestly was some of the most fun Battlefield I've ever played in my life and sure it had a few issues and the maps were quite small, but the thing is is it kind of catered more to the console player base and I believe the size and scale of the maps was appropriate for that kind of combat. And the maps weren't necessarily small in that game, you had a lot of room to work with because you were on islands. You would actually launch off of carriers just like in Battlefield 1942 with your aircraft and your pontoon boats that would go across the ocean to the islands. So maybe the landmass was smaller but the overall area in which you got to fight and maneuver around was actually quite large. 
They also had a Wake Island map that was just really great in that game, and I really wish that we could see more of it in the future. And then, like I said, I watched uh, the Tactical Rednecks video, and I think I might just go ahead and play a few clips from it for you guys. Full credits to Tactical Redneck. Please go check out his channel. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Um, but he made so many points during his video the other day when he was playing through the beginning of the Battlefield uh, Bad Company 2 campaign, and it really did resonate with me. What's going on, everyone? It's Tactical Redneck. And today, I'm making this video because I felt the need. What you're seeing right now is the very first mission of Battlefield Bad Company 2's campaign. And if you haven't played it, then you don't know that it's set in World War II. Now, not only is it set in World War II, but I feel the need to make the video, make the video, because not only is it set in World War II, but it feels like it's set in World War II. And I feel like this is something that the people at DICE should have went back to watch before they even decided to, cons to start working on Battlefield 5. Japanese soldiers with the right uniforms? Bunkers with AA guns? They're speaking Japanese? But what you don't see is women with prosthetic limbs. Go away. Or strange steampunk looking outfits. It feels and looks like World War II. And eight years later, this game still holds up graphically compared to many other games, which is absolutely nuts. So it just goes to show that if you do your homework, you can make a situation look plausible. Now I'm sorry, but you just don't get that type of cinematic in Battlefield 5. That was extremely well crafted. Extremely well crafted. I find it hilarious that a game such as Bad Company 2 that is really not supposed to be so serious as much as it is a parody of other shooters as far as its campaign, now excluding this mission, does World War II better than a game that's centralized around World War II. The game has a fictional story, has fictional events in World War II, but yet maintains the story and the setting. It maintains the setting and a little bit of accuracy versus all of the, the craziness going on with Battlefield 5 at the moment. It's, it's just really sad to see that DICE used to understand World War II. They used to get it. They've done World War II correctly. And it just kind of grinds my gears to see the direction that Battlefield 5 is having to take just to appease modern standards and to appease the fast-paced Call of Duty crowd that has been plaguing the industry. No offense, guys, if you like Call of Duty. I love Call of Duty at times as well, but not every game needs to be that fast. What makes Battlefield special is that you have this large environment with tons of vehicles, land, sea, air, you know, all this different types of like combat combining together. You can have all these strategies formed, you have so much more room to work with and work with your team, and I honestly don't even like things like the squad respawning. I think squad respawning worked in Bad Company very well, the way it was balanced, the way it was handled. But honestly, it really just doesn't feel like a thing that needs to be in the game. During the beginning of the Battlefield 5 beta, there was actually a glitch to where you couldn't squad respawn and you could only respawn at the uh, flag points. And there was actually no way to revive like your squad mates either from the ground. So that entire system was completely bugged out and I actually felt like the gameplay was better for it. You actually had to coordinate large like team efforts to go from flag to flag instead of just having all these squads spawning on top of each other on these flanks from every direction and it just being a complete clusterfuck. So, I don't know, it just, it feels more like a team game when everybody is spawning on flags together and not just squad spawning all over the place getting all these cheap flank maneuvers. And it's just, it's kind of like what Big Fry said in his video, everything feels like a Zerg rush in Battlefield 5. And while that can be entertaining and fun, especially with the gunplay that's actually pretty alright at times, I'll get more onto the gunplay later. So what the game just boils down to is just everyone sprinting whole hog, full tilt, you know, all that stuff. 
you know, no mercy. Everyone's just sprinting at each other, shooting everywhere. Things are exploding. And while it can be chaotic and cool, it's not what Battlefield's always been about. And it really does just remind me every time I play it. While I might be having fun in a little bit of a moment from here to here and there, it's not Battlefield. We're not playing Battlefield anymore. We're playing Battlefront with a World War II skin on top of it. And to get further into that Battlefront 2 analogy or whatever, the EA Battlefront, not the good one, um, the gunplay just feels kind of like we're shooting laser beams at each other. Like for World War II weapons, these things are pinpoint accurate, and I don't know what the hell is going on with that. There was the time when Battlefield guns, especially in the earlier games, they weren't very accurate at all. You actually had to close the gap really far just to get some accurate fire. And while that might have been like a limitation of the time or maybe just inexperienced programming, it actually kind of added to the immersive feel of the game. I know it's kind of weird to devolve your games like that, especially now, and it might confuse and or frustrate a lot of modern day gamers, but I honestly think the Battlefield community would appreciate it greatly if the different weapons had very different feels to them. Hell, even in Battlefield 1943, things like the Thompson were pretty much worthless unless you got in very, very close to the enemy. And thus it would promote things like your sniper recon class actually being very useful because they had that long range bolt action rifle. However, the bolt action animations took a little bit of time in that game. In Battlefield 5, you can like run around quick scoping people like it's nothing and it's just really upsetting because back in 1943 you had, like I said, those longer reload animations, bolt action animations. Getting the scope up took a little bit longer, but it was ultimately way more of a satisfying sniper experience. So I don't know, you tell me. I guess the point of this video is to say that if you enjoy Battlefield 5, I don't blame you because they've done a lot of things to make it appealing to us gamers, especially nowadays. But if you go back, play any of the classic Battlefields like 1942, Vietnam, 2142, or 1943, and then you come back to Battlefield 5, you just, you just don't feel like DICE gives a shit anymore about you. You just feel like they've lost their way, like they don't know what they're doing anymore. And that doesn't even get me started on all of the bugs and the glitches. This is a beta, and by the way, beta doesn't mean anything nowadays unless you're actually a good developer like, I don't know, New World Interactive. Beta essentially just is a, like, pre-order demo, and the fact that this game is in such a rough state right now, with such a little bit amount of time left on it, and yes, they did push the game back, but it's still coming out, like, in a month or two, right? So it's not even that much more time. Just seeing the state it's in, it's just it really doesn't give me much confidence in the game's success. And while I still might end up picking it up if I see it for like $20, I really just don't see why anyone should support this game at release for the full price. Look at the game in the state it's in right now and ask yourself, is this worth $60, even if it was slightly improved upon full release? In a lot of ways, you'll actually benefit too from waiting because the maps are going to be free, the updates that are going to be coming to the game later to improve the game are going to be free, and then you can get the game for a lower price, so why not wait for the game to go on sale, get the game for like $20 or whatever, $25 or whatever your regional equivalent is, and then have more maps to play on, thus more multiplayer variety, more weapons to play with because I'm sure they're going to add more for free, and, and you know, stuff like that. And lastly, they have this stupid currency system in the game which really grinds my gears because it really starts to look like a pay to win scheme or a pay to have cooler shit scheme because we don't know how many points you're going to end a match with, how many you're going to be rewarded with after a game, right? So they could give you anywhere from like 50 to like 100 to like 5,000 of these battlefield, you know, uh, rank up points or whatever they're going to be called at the end of the day. And these can be used, I believe, to add weapon skins and camos, which I'm okay with. Cosmetics, unlocking it with points, you know, it's frustrating, but it's okay because that's like what we've been conditioned to accept at this point. And it's just cosmetic, so whatever. But then you have the actual upgrades for your weapon, which are not cosmetic, are not attachments, but rather flat stat increases that you get on a skill tree. Which, by the way, is just so freaking stupid. I understand that they needed ways to make it where you can customize your weapons to make it appealing again. A lot of people's biggest complaints since Battlefield 4 was like, Hey, I can't upgrade my weapons as much as I'd like to in Battlefield 1. There's not really a lot of attachments or weapon vari variants to work with. There's not a lot to do here to make this weapon my own. And it's really disappointing because in Battlefield 4 we had like 80 billion varieties of weapons we could choose from, right? 
And uh, it, it's one thing where I understand why they were trying to fix that in Battlefield 5, but the way they went about it was very poor in my opinion. Instead of getting like a foregrip to increase your hip fire accuracy or your aim down sights accuracy, now you just literally have a point that you put into a box and then the box lights up and it's like, hey, now you got plus 15% better hip fire or whatever. And there's also one that unlocks faster bullets, like your muzzle velocity gets increased or something by a stat point and nothing changes on your weapon. Like, I just, it's weird, right? It doesn't really work. It doesn't make sense. And by the way, you basically have to upgrade your gun to be competitive with anyone who else, anyone else who has that gun and it's ranked up for them. So essentially you're starting the game with a worse version of a weapon you just unlocked than some other guy who's been playing for longer than you. So again, it's going to be an experience trumps actual raw skill from the get-go kind of deal. And that really does just kind of make it full circle with the whole like Star Wars Battlefront 2 analogy. Now, I know this isn't as egregious as the star card system was, but the fact that you're giving players advantages over newcomers is still really scummy. And they've been doing that ever since like Battlefield, well, like Bad Company in a way. Bad Company's perks and progression were really well balanced, but again, if you had the attachments and if you had the perks, you were going to be a bit better than the competition. But this has just been like a huge rant on the game. I wanted just, just to just get it like all out in one video. I know this isn't very polished, not very professional, but who knows, maybe you guys like this kind of video more than my uh, normally written out kind of stuff. And there's a lot more issues with this game than what I've covered today. There's so much more. I had, I had like a seven page script written out for this video, but instead of reading it and being boring like I normally am, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna rant and rave because that's how I feel about this game right now. I want to like it so bad and they're making it so hard to be a fan of Battlefield right now. It's like, fuck EA because they're just, they're just doing everything in their power and ice, you know, honestly, they're not helping anything. They're just doing everything in their power right now to make me not want to play this game. And it's like, guys, I want to give you my money. I really do, but I just can't support you and your silly decisions right now with this game. You don't really know what you're doing, and all you had to do was make 1943 or my, uh, 1942 and just make it look better. That was all they had to do to appease the fans, to make everyone happy. Okay, I guess that not everybody would be happy with that, but I'm sure the, the hardcore Battlefield community would love it. I don't think the game would be getting all of this pre-order woes where people aren't pre-ordering it. I, I just think DICE have really lost their way. So, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'd be very, 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 very curious to uh, hear your comments. I always love to read the comments on everything. And of course, I would like to thank my uh, Patreon members who have been pledging and helping out the channel. We've got Rick Amaru, LDR, Brodo Fatskins, and Jonathan. Thank you all very, very much for your very generous uh, donations to the channel. Um, it helps me uh, not starve to death, so I appreciate it. And also, if you guys didn't know, uh, I'm actually a Green Man Gaming affiliate now, so that means if you go to the link in the description, if there's any games on Steam you're interested in buying, if you click on that link, buy the game through there, I'll actually get a little bit of a, you know, commission from that, and it would help me out greatly as, uh, you know, I do like to eat food too, sometimes. <laughs> But yeah, in all seriousness, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, for supporting the channel over the last few weeks. You guys have been wonderful. I've been having the time of my life on the channel. The streams have been fun. Everybody's been having a good time. And uh, it's a good environment we've got here. So if you like the video too and you're new around here, feel free to subscribe. I'll see you guys on the battlefields. Stay frosty out there.